rush. For me, video games serve as wish fulfillment. In my opinion, few games embody that better than Virtua Cop. Having been raised on movies like Beverly Hills Cop, Cobra, and Tango and Cash, I always wanted to be a wisecracking hero faced with impossible odds, mowing down bad guys with more style than a loathsome neckbeard like myself dare dream possible. In addition, I was homeless for a spell. We weren't living on the streets, but in campgrounds and motels. Playing games like Virtua Fighter and Virtua Cop offered me an escape as well as an outlet for my angst, brief though it may have been. What was that? You're fucked in the head, Deke! <laughs> Four years later, I would buy a Saturn for $20 at Toys R Us. Of course, it came with three games, one of which was Virtua Cop. I wouldn't enjoy it fully until I got the Stunner, otherwise known as my favorite light gun. Thankfully, I still have a VCR and a CRT. Yeah, we're gonna do this right. This game is almost 30 years old, and I love it just as much now as I did then. Unlike Lethal Enforcers, it's not digitized cutouts shouting, Eat lead, copper! No, this is a fully rendered 3D rail shooter spread across three stages of difficulty, each broken up into three sections. The Arms Black Market, Underground Storage, and the Gang Headquarters. I mean, Whenever I see these faceless suits with their shades, I can't help but recall the finale for Beverly Hills Cop, or even the killer. I look at Rage and Smarty and think Riggs and Murtaugh, or Tango and Cash. Bad cop? Worst cop. <laughs> <laughs> even the plot reminds me of Hard Boiled. Both narratives are thin, if not outright anorexic, and involve gun smuggling. At least, Johnny Wong was clever enough to hide his arsenal in the hospital as opposed to a building with a sign that reads evil out front. Get the fuck out of here! Somebody else has said it myself. It's like you're acting out this wild bullet ballet in a virtual backlot, loaded with power-ups, weapons, and a whole lot of explosions. Seriously, blasting these dick-farting assholes through crates or panes of glass, blowing up cars, how can one not feel like Bruce Willis or Chow Yun-Fat? Adding to the immersion is being able to target the enemy's body, limbs, or head, resulting in different animations. Something we hadn't seen previously and would even inspire Rare when developing GoldenEye 007 for Nintendo 64. Excellent. Just the thing from winding after a rough day at the office. Yeah, the graphics may look as if you're laying waste to the inhabitants of Minecraft, yet I find them charming now. To be fair, much of that may be nostalgic, for I still remember how these visuals were once considered cutting edge. Regardless, the frame rate is consistently smooth. In those rare instances where slowdown occurs, I can't help but think to myself, this needs more doves. I'm a John Woo fan, okay? Lay off. The world is fairly large, swimming in vibrant color, toss in some hard-hitting sound effects, and a stellar soundtrack, it's an action lover's dream. Considering this was converted from Sega's Model 2 arcade board, I think it's stunning. Any uh, chance of a freeway? If I have any complaints, it's that the bosses are a tad one note. Kong fires rockets you gotta shoot, while King hurls fireballs you gotta shoot, and I mean, sure, subordinates will jump out to help, still it feels like padding. Boss and Fang make up for it with much needed theatricality, though much of that momentum you feel throughout the game is lost here. Would have been nice had they been more dynamic, like you were chasing after them or something. Not a huge gripe, I'm just saying. The Saturn provides some sweet features like free play and gun select, as well as more basic offerings like difficulty, lives, etc. As for Virtua Cop 2, I've decided to lock it behind some ridiculous paywall only patrons will be able to access, which will be erected as soon as the seas boil and the sky falls. You know you're really just full of shit. There's the job. Okay?